Good evening. I'm uh, giving you, I wanted to do a short update here on our idle speed control issue. This is the lower engine intake manifold. And these are basically your eight cylinders. And um, over here to the left is the um, throttle, your throttle control, your throttle. And to your right, this is the manifold for the brake booster. I will get to this here in a minute. And then here we have the connection for the EGR return. That's where your exhaust goes in when the EGR opens up through the heat valve, temperature valve on your intake, on your water side. And uh, the vacuum opens up and then there's more. You push the throttle, there's more of the gas you get recirculating. Emissions, emission gas recirculation EGR. And this is basically what that looks like. This is not for my car yet. I haven't gotten so far, but I found a picture of it of what you can expect. But let me get to this issue here first. It seems to be more and more cars, the 420s and the 560s, whether the chassis really, if it's the SL, SEC or SEL in either form, it really doesn't make any difference on the 126 on this 117 engine better. I don't know about the 116, but the 117 engine. This is the overthrow nut, which goes to where your vacuum line attaches to from the brake booster. And these nuts seem to come loose either by accident or they were never really tightened or who knows, or someone worked them and they couldn't retighten them. This will take a 19 millimeter or three quarter inch nut uh, uh, crawford to get to it and you need to tighten this. So if you have a rough idle, the first thing I would do is I would disconnect the two vacuum lines you have on the upper intake manifold uh, you know the little hoses the one is for your transmission modulator take that off and cap it and the other one is the one which goes over to your economy gauge and to your AC system in the um, vacuum system in the dashboard you know for all these vacuum valves and can disconnect that too and plug both of those off as well um, for this test and I also would plug off the ones which are actually coming out here. You can hardly see this, but there's three hoses coming out of here. They go to the two vacuum valves and to the perch valve over for your charcoal canister. If you can turn all three of those off, leave only the advanced connected, the vacuum for the advanced on the EZL unit, which is a different port on the top. And then uh, tighten this one here down and then start the engine up and um, disconnect this cable on the brake booster and, and cap it and um, you shouldn't have any leakage here in this area whatsoever and then you will really see if your EHA valve is correct if your plate the mass flow plate is correct and your idle speed control valve is correct you should have your idle corrected so it should just go normally then required that the idle speed control unit and the fuel pump uh, cutoff relay is working correctly. Now, as you can see, as we got eight gaskets here, O-ring gaskets, Mercedes-Benz sells them for like $9 a piece. That's probably the best investment you can make. It is fairly easy to get to them. But once you get to them, it's, they're going to be hot. They're going to be rock solid hot because they probably have never been replaced. And if they're starting to leak here, you're going to be bypassing air everywhere into this whole system and your idle is never going to work. Besides this, if you have too much carbon composite uh, built up in here from the EGR system, uh, then you need to have this taken out and cleaned. This is what I expect what my unit looks like. And if you have watched the other videos I've posted while I was working on, I've been referring to the uh, gaskets underneath and pointing to the intake manifold. Well, this is what they look like. And I haven't gotten this far yet because I've ordered them from Mercedes-Benz and I'm waiting for them to get here. I don't start taking anything apart until I have absolutely all parts in house. And then I start to take to disassemble something because otherwise you wind up with these projects where you're waiting for parts and then you get one project mixed up with another and then suddenly you get parts in one box which doesn't belong there and so far and so on and you never get this going back correctly well anyway this is what what you can expect 
the problem is if you remember this on top of this these they have the the upper manif manifold that is half rounded tubes basically going up this is a very sophisticated airflow system they got in there and this kind of carbon deposit will reduce the diameter of it and the volume in there and that will screw up your airflow completely so that means that one cylinder is going to run richer or leaner than the other cylinder depends on where you got more build up of this stuff so this is what i'm expecting at 300,000 miles if i have the original manifolds in there then this is what this is going to look like and like i said is that other thing is what looks like almost like a spider on top it sits on top of this that's where these things connect and they have to seal 100 percent right otherwise they're going to be sucking air in all over the place and that will give you an unstable idle and your idle speed control valve you got the icv will never be able to compensate for these leaks down here um cost wise on my system if you have followed the videos i've posted the original issue was the idle speed control valve the icv and the problem was it was stuck it would not fully reopen the spring was too weak or there was you know carbon composite in it which just allowed it to fully open up and so i had to replace this one i bought a gray market version from Mercedes from video which is didn't meet Mercedes-Benz criteria so it became a gray market item for $225 um, it was made in Germany made by video but it is not 100% Mercedes so I ordered one that part is $650 now I'm going to put that separate in the calculations here and then I ordered the EHA valve uh, which I had to get because the previous owner who did not want to go through cleaning this and replacing these things and retightening his brake booster decided to have his mechanic uh, adjust the air mixture with the plate and the eha valve to compensate for a failing icv valve and this problem here and the other two hoses which are on top of it where the e uh, icv valve connects to this so there's altogether three hoses to the uh, a sucking hose or the the vent hose for fumes from the left or right um, fuel lines fuel injectors the one on the other side and then this crossing hose which goes to the icv valve and then where that goes in here into the boot the boot bypasses basically here the uh, the throttle control and um, so that part was 80 bucks in terms of hoses the EHA valve, oh yeah, let me go back to that first, was $450. I had to purchase, if they wouldn't have messed around with the EHA valve and didn't uh, screw up the thread on the uh, screw, which is over the nine, three, two millimeter uh, Allen key, then I wouldn't have to buy this. So if you don't have to buy the ICV, but you have idle speed control problems, or you can clean out your ICV and it is still good, and your EHA is good, then you don't have that $1,000 expense or $1,100 expense. I had, I have to fix a lot of the things on this car because of the way things were repaired or, you know, half as repaired or not really repaired, but, you know, just kept going. Anyway, but you will have to get this here. So you're looking at 80, probably $120 in gaskets here for that part, $80 for the air hoses on top and then probably another $20 for the two air hoses which connect the EHA valve and the interconnecting plastic pieces. So I would think the whole total probably to fix this properly, the idle speed is around 300 bucks without any actuators or sensors. Um, you may have to get a new, oh yeah, back to the brake booster thing. This is one thing, is to test this, is you, you unscrew the brake booster cable or line on the on the brake booster and you plug it off and that should basically give you a smooth idle and you will be able to check for for uh, air leakage or vacuum leakage around here but that should stabilize it if that still is rough and, and then you're gonna have this here and uh, probably to 99 percent of the time uh, that's what that looks like it that's what you're gonna get there 
This is typical for American cars only. And the reason for this is the unleaded gas with catalytic converter and exhaust gas re uh, recirculation system. The German cars, which were non-catalytic converter, leaded gas with 272 horsepower and 290 horsepower, the special version for protective services. That means that those were the armored vehicles with the pants of glass, what we call it, you know, the bulletproof glass and this, that, and the other thing. Um, they don't have that issue because they don't have that exhaust gas coming back into the engine. They, theirs are going to be a lot cleaner than this here. <clears throat> this is from a picture from a 560 SL, which was here in the States, which was shipped back to Germany to a repair shop. This is where this picture came from. The owner had it brought back or sent over, sold to Germany, to someone in Germany. It's an US version federal, uh, an SL, 560 SL, uh, probably in a good shape, California, Arizona car or something like this. But you can see this is the damage they had. And they had the same problem, rough idle or high idle um, and anything they did. And they also had the issue with the loose brake connector, this one here. Uh, we don't know yet why this is, so it would be interesting if other 560 or 420 SEL, SL, SEC owners check this. Check your brake booster cable, uh, brake booster connection, and leave us a message so we know what that is, what that could be, or we can find out where that is at. The check valve goes bad in this connection, and the booster, of course, can go bad. The boosters, there's a minimal leakage allowed that is somewhere in the manual, and you want to stay under it. The brake booster is fairly expensive. Mercedes-Benz sells them for about $600. Um, the hose itself is about 125 for check valve. So that's about a $750 item, which would have to be replaced. On my car, it seems to be okay. The brake booster I got is an aftermarket value of, uh, unit in there. This is why I got suspicious here and it really turned out to be the case. I do not know if uh, American uh, mechanics do this on purpose that they loosen this up to help air go through in here to, to, to have the car run leaner to, to pass the emissions tests. This is what I suspect that if you have emissions testing, state emissions testing, uh, that they loosen this, that will give a more air and your car is basically going to run leaner. So when you come out of the testing station, the first thing you really got to do is to retighten this nut in order to have full brake power. Because if you loosen this nut too much, your brake booster is just going to be not working right at all. You, you won't have no more brakes, basically. Um, so this is something what I suspect on how they got uh, we got to these loose nuts is the uh, almighty uh, state inspections, annual state inspections, the smoke test or whatever you call it, that's going to be the culprit in this. Um, probably as all of these cars get, uh, you're probably going to be exempt from this smoke test or uh, emissions test. If you do, what I'm probably going to do with my car is I'm going to get the seal plate here. To, to cover this. The European cars or the German cars, they have a metal plate here. You put your gasket on your metal plate and you screw this in with shorter hex key screws and that, that tightens it off and then you basically disassemble the entire EGR system. Uh, and this needs to be cleaned. My guess, and probably the easiest way to clean this is with seafoam and MEK and acetone. So you mix uh, acetone and MEK together first and you let that soak. Uh, you got to do that outdoors because it's going to stink like crazy. You, you want to get high of stuff, that's going to be it. You remove everything and you soak this whole thing and then you need the brush. And then see that you get this brushed into and loosened up. This will take a while. Uh, unless you know someone uh, who got an acid wash system where they can put that in and they can run this through with a special solvent or acid, uh, then they will come out clean and I'm probably going to do the upper manifold too. I may just have to bring this over to the to the engine shop here in Kansas City which uh, still has the machine, the acid wash machine. That usually gets the best results. I did this with a Jaguar XJ6 engine years ago and that worked out pretty nice. He did, the guy did a tremendous job. And um, so that's what I'm suspecting. 
that's that's where it's at so this is where your idle problem is coming from you looking at it that and the other hoses and the vacuum leaks and the icv and, and this that and the other thing so you fix everything i'm probably gonna be in on the ic on the idle speed issue 1500 dollars I had another 700, 600, 700 dollars on water pump related issues with fan and clutch because of the collapsed uh, engine mounts I got. That's another 400 dollar item. And uh, I got the rack and pinion on the um, on my ball joints. Lower ball joints have to be replaced and the flex discs and my rear transmission mount also. So this is kind of my plate here. I would say I probably gonna have about $4,000 on this car. I paid $750 for it and $1,100 for shipping from California to Kansas City. So for six grand, it's not a bad deal. I still gotta do the cosmetic stuff, seats are torn, you know, carpet cleaning and then and, and paint and um, some dents and scratches and that stuff and I have to get a new master key remade so I would think I probably wind up six seven grand for the total thing but then I have a pretty decent vehicle because the engine in itself is in a good shape and the transmission is in a good shape so that should last for a while um, the other thing is you also want to get the boot oh yeah that boot under your CIS the airflow that was another 90 bucks or so 80 or 90 bucks that comes on top of it so you might be in for about 500 to 600 dollars if you go uh, only fixing the rubber related issue with your idle speed control plus cleaning the uh, the lower man intake manifold out when I get to this I would think we have parts coming from Germany my idle speed control valve is coming from Germany the original one and there's uh, probably some other gasket stuff they need to send over from Missy Dispens in Stuttgart. So when this is here, then I will, and I have a weekend, I will do this over the weekend. One was Saturday, probably tear down, or Friday afternoon tear down, and then Saturday rebuilding this so I can have a day off on Sunday and just test drive the car. That's kind of what the plan is at the moment. By that time, I hope I got Travis to have the engine mounts replace which coming in and they're going to be hopefully tuesday now the whole christmas thing has slowed down the mail and everything else and it's you know understandable in our situation and uh people you know they've got tons of stuff they're sending more mail than ever more parcels than ever and then my car parts are somewhere held up in there um, one word of wisdom is the rubber parts buy them from mercedes-benz they cost a few dollars more on eBay, this is new old stock. These rubber parts are probably 15 to 25 years old and they're about three quarters as hard as the one you're gonna take off. The parts you're gonna get from Mercedes-Benz directly, they're two, three years old and they're gonna have 20 years of life left in it. The ones you got new old stock, I had this with the antenna seal for the antenna mast the one which is on the outside i bought that for seven dollars i thought i was smart and that was the first purchase i did when i got the car because i didn't want it to rain in and that thing was from 2002 and it was harder than any of the other rubber i got already in there so that was a wasted seven dollars plus six dollars in shipping so i could have basically saved myself that money this is what they're saying is cheap buys twice that's exactly what it is so there's no shortcut in this but then on the other hand is it's gonna last you a long time you know if you do the proper maintenance with it then you don't have to worry about it all right the next video I will post is in reference to the um, to the whole um, quiz control issue with these plugs and everything else people seem to be quite excited about it but that's it for the idle speed update. Next video on this series with the idle speed will be when we actually take the whole thing off. And I will get you some videos there of what my engine is going to look like on my intake manifolds. I may have my luck and have some less in it. I may have more in it. Who knows? We will find out when we get your bike. I can guarantee you these eight O-rings are going to be toast when we take them off. They're going to be bone hot. All right. Have a great evening. Good night.